Today we are going to talk about control systems. This is a, the first video we're doing in this series. Kushal has been putting these together. He started working with us doing EEFAQs and he did such a fantastic job. He wanted to do a control system series and so that's, that's what we're doing. As always, he's way ahead of me. So if you have run out of videos in this series, go check on circuitbread.com because there's probably going to be several more tutorials up there that he's put together. And again, these are fantastic and I hope I do them justice here on the video. So with that, Let's jump into control systems. Control systems are basically systems that make the output what you want it to be, okay? That's not at all the scientific or engineering way of looking at it, but that's basically what it is. It's to get the output that you want from something. So I think one of the best examples for some reason that popped into my mind was, imagine you have at a, um, at a restaurant or fast food place, you have a cup that you wanna put soda in and you go up and you want to fill it up to a certain point and so you push the lever until the soda comes up to where you want and then you pull the cup back and voila you have a cup of soda that is a control system as crazy as it sounds that is basically you said i want this to be filled so you controlled the filling of it by putting it in closer and then once it got to the point where you wanted it to be you pulled it out now the interesting thing about that example is because there are other ways of doing it. You can, I've seen some and they've been out for decades now so it's not a new thing, but where you put the cup in and then there's little things that say you want the small cup, the medium cup, or the big cup and you push that, up, that, push that button and then it fills up to your cup size that you have there. And so that is a different way of approaching it, a different system that accomplishes the same goal. Now this is pretty interesting because you have what are called open loop systems and closed loop systems. The funny thing is, is if you take your cup and you put it at a, on one of those machines and you say, I, this is a medium cup, fill it to medium, that is an open loop system. It's not getting any feedback. It doesn't know if you've already filled it halfway full of Sprite before you put it over to root beer. It doesn't know if there's ice in there. It doesn't know if a little kid threw a, a baseball and it knocked the cup out of the way, it doesn't know. So it just keeps on pouring until it says, hey, I filled this up because there's no feedback. There's nothing in the system that says, is everything going all right? Or has there been what's called a disturbance? And so that is an open loop system. Now, me having a brain, bear with me, I have a brain and an eyeball, so when I'm putting it up, I can see it's going up, and if I'm getting root beer, it foams a lot, so I know, oh, I gotta take it out, let it foam down, go back, because I am seeing what's happening, and I can respond to any disturbances. If there's a kid that throws a baseball and hits it, it, it goes and it stops, and I can yell at the kid and stuff like that, so, you know, I can react to it, and so that is a closed loop system. Now, those terms open loop and closed loop will make a little bit more sense once we get into the drawings because in a closed loop system, graphically, it closes the loop as you take your output and you feed it back to your input to get the output that you want. So in a closed loop system, you have what's called feedback and there's two types of feedback and you may have seen like the memes and the t-shirts that engineers wear that say, I only give negative feedback. Um, that actually means something if you're not familiar with it. There's positive feedback where you take the output and you add it to the input and then there's negative feedback which is where you take the output and you subtract it from the input. And I remember when I first learned about this in control systems, I was like, wait, how, how is negative feedback good? I, I thought, wouldn't you want to add to your system, especially with amplifiers and things like that. However, most cases you actually want negative feedback and that's where the joke comes from because even though they're talking about being I don't know, jerks and negative. In reality, most of the time, especially if you're dealing with op-amp circuits and stuff like that, you want a negative feedback because it makes, typically makes things more stable, makes things more controllable. So um, we'll get into the more detail about that later, but just know that there's two types of feedback, the positive feedback where you add the output to the input and a negative feedback where you take the output and you subtract it from the input. And by doing so, you usually take out some of the error and some of the noise that you have gotten into the system during the process. And again, we'll get into more detail with that in later tutorials, but that's um, an important term to know right now. And so I used op amps as a specific example uh, for 
positive versus negative feedback. And I actually want to use op amps to talk a little bit about control systems as well, because up to this point, the soda thing is it's great to understand conceptually, but it doesn't really apply to the engineering world. Well, I guess if you're engineering a better soda machine, it is. But um, let's talk about something that's more doubly related. So if we take an op amp, and you've got your typical op amp, doo -doo -doo, and we're going to ignore the power supplies, and you have this connected to 5 volts, and this connected to 4.99 volts. So the, the way an op amp is set up is the gain is supposedly infinite, and in an ideal op amp, it's completely infinite. And what that means is in this scenario, the output is going to jump rail to rail. So at the 4.99 volts, if it's 4.99 volts or 5.1 volts, will cause this output to flip completely to the highest output that it can or uh, completely down to zero or negative if it's, if it's got a negative power supply. So that that's not what we want all the time. I, I mean, sometimes if you want to use it as a comparator, that's exactly what you want. But if you want to use it as a comparator, just buy a comparator because those have better, they work better. But a lot of the time when you're using op amps, you're using them as amplifiers. And in that case, you want to have some feedback where you'll go and you'll either have this directly connected to the input and then you're going to have some weird stuff like that. And that is just a voltage follower which is how you take a high impedance output and turn it into a low impedance output uh, because basically it's just mirroring whatever that voltage is right there. Or you can stick a resistor in here and then you want to put another resistor right here and maybe put this to ground, have that one of those be a potentiometer, something like that so that you can control the feedback that you're getting and that will actually make it more stable. So uh, op amps are a great example of feedback and of control systems because by changing those resistances right there and by changing the voltages and by changing the supplies, you have this seemingly simple circuit react in a completely different way. So some of the changes that happen when you have feedback is you change your system stability, you change the bandwidth, uh, you change the gain, and depending on how you set up the feedback, you can make these better or worse. And again, it depends on your application. Maybe you want something that oscillates wildly on the output. Um, so that really depends. But when you're doing feedback in your control system, you need to think about exactly what you want to do and how you're affecting those parameters. So I'd like to actually give one, one final uh, example, uh, well, maybe two and go over the parts of a control system. So, so I'm going to use the generic terms at first. So here on the input we have reference, and then we have the controller, the control input, the system, sometimes called a plant. I'm assuming like a manufacturing plant versus a growing plant. I don't know, system makes more sense to me. You've got your output, and then you've got your feedback. Okay, so this is the basic layout of a very simple closed loop control system. So using the soda machine example, we can go over this and we can kind of assign something to each aspect of that. So here we've got the reference, which is basically how full we want that cup to be. We've got the controller, which in this case would be my hand as the human. The control input would be that little metal lever thing that you push the soda against. The system would actually be the cup because you that's what you're wanting to fill up. The output would be the current actual level of soda in the cup. And then the feedback would be me looking at it, or if I was blind or weird, I'd having my finger in there to see how high it came. So as I'm looking at it saying, I want it to be up to here, I'm going to move my hand to move the lever to fill up the system, watching the output and then either keeping it there longer to fill it up or saying I've hit the level I need to and pull it back and voila, I now have a control system in my hand. It's amazing. Another interesting way to look at this is, and it was something my wife thought I was super weird, but um, I, I actually had my first kid when I was taking this class in college. Um, and I remember she was born and her head was like all wobbling around and I thought this is, this is a little control system in the making. It's so weird to see how she's learning from the feedback of like, hey, I'm just doing whatever. And at first she was basically an open loop system because 
things were flailing around, there was absolutely no cause and effect. You know, if you've ever been around babies, they poke themselves in the eyes and they don't really seem to have much control over themselves. But as they get older and older, they learn like, hey, if I stand in this certain way, I'm actually stable. And hey, if I do this, I can pick up food and shove it in my mouth. And I, it, was, it was really fascinating because like you could even just say in terms of walking, you've got all of this, the references, the kid wants to be standing walking and the controller is their, basically their brain. Uh, the control input is their muscles and the system is their legs. The output is whether or not they're standing and the feedback is the fact that they're staring at the carpet crying because they fell on their face. And so they kind of learn, hey, I need to change my control input to get my system to do what it needs to do so that my output is what I desire. And they go through that feedback loop over and over and over for months until finally they can walk. So it's, it's pretty fascinating. It's something that once you start really thinking about this, you can see control systems everywhere and it's uh, quite cool. So I'm really grateful that uh, Kushal wanted to put these together and he's just been doing an awesome job with the written tutorials. And again, I'm really excited to continue going through uh, and making these video tutorials. And um, I highly, highly recommend you go check out his written tutorials because he's, he's a smart guy and they're really, really well done. And this is a good overview, but he goes into some good detail. But I'm really excited for the further videos that we're going to be doing on this and the further tutorials that we have. But if you have any questions, if you have any issues, of course, leave them in the comments below. Um, go to circuitbread.com and leave them in the comments there. We actually just started a Discord channel or server, whatever they call it. So you can hop on there and um, post any questions you have there. Uh, our goal is to help you learn whatever you need to learn. So let us help you. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, all that good stuff. We will see you in the next one.